Hello, my name is Professor Christopher Harper, and I'll be your teacher for this online course in Ethics in Journalism. And I just wanted to uh, start out with a couple of things. Some of you may have taken an online course before, others may not. The important thing is to, you know, really treat this as, you know, you're going to class every week. It may not be a physical classroom, but it's important to sit down, spend the time, look at the videos, and also answer the discussion questions and keep up with the course. In an online course it's really difficult to uh, catch up with a course and keep up with it. Uh, once you get behind it's it's awfully tough. It does take discipline. Uh, it gives you some flexibility in terms of when you do the class, what you what you do with the class, but uh, uh, just keep in mind it's, it's, it's different. Um, it's more of an, a mix between uh, the lectures and an independent study. So just, you know, keep up with the, with the material and, and sit down, set aside a time uh, to do it each week and, and get it done. So I'm just going to go over the syllabus briefly. Um, the course explores ethical issues that occur in, in journalism, uh, but also to give you kind of a wider view of, of how ethics works in societies. So how do you make ethical decisions? Um, there are a lot of problems that are occurring in uh, the news or in news organizations today. Um, there's a lack of trust and uh, on the part of the public when it comes to the news media, confrontation with the President of the United States um, at the current time, and and just a, an overall sense that maybe we're not doing so well when it comes to how we make decisions on what we cover and how we cover um, uh, news in, in, in the current society. So we also have to, to look at, at how the kind of traditional ethical structures translate into um, into digital journalism, uh, be it social media, or other forms of emerging media. Um, and we're going to use one book uh, that you have to buy. It's required. It's uh, a book uh, that's put together by Kelly McBride and Tom Rosensteel, who are longtime um, experts in the field of journalism and journalism ethics. Um, it's called The New Ethics of Journalism from Sage Press. It is uh, available at the bookstore, but you can also buy it online. Another requirement of this course is to use a computer program called Grammarly.com. What this does is it, uh, uh, this program checks uh, all kinds of grammar, punctuation, style. It makes suggestions on, on how you may rewrite things. Uh, and uh, it's not inexpensive, but it's not, you know, it's not terrible. It's maybe $8 per month while you're taking this course. You have to buy the professional uh, uh, version, not the free version. Uh, and I'm going to be checking on whether you use this or not. It's fairly easy for me to, to, to do. I think that you'll find that this is a program that you might want to use, that you will want to use beyond this course because it gives you a, a very good check um, on grammar, punctuation, style, and, and substance in all writing. There are going to be various case studies, and I will alert you to uh, what they are and where you can find them. You should plan on spending at least two to three hours of reading per week. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's going to be less, sometimes it's going to be more, but just to plan ahead, set aside that amount of time. Uh, because this is an online course, the discussion is going to be much more interactive via, <clears throat> via the discussion board, and it's going to count for a great deal more than what it would in, um, in a, a classroom. Uh, there are going to be four analyses. Uh, each one of these are worth 10% of your total grade. I'll go through this in a little bit more detail. Um, and then there's a final project, which is a 2,000-word paper, uh, which analyzes an important ethical case or trend. And here you're going to need academic sources. Uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not adverse to using the popular press or stuff from news organizations, but um, that's going to be as a secondary source. You need three academic sources 
uh, for your final paper. Uh, not just what's happening and what the analysis is in the the current meme of of the week or or the month. Grading scale is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, one thing when it comes to late work, it can be submitted within one week for 70% credit with the exception of the final paper. There's no leeway on the final paper unless you have some illness uh, that's documented that you can't get it done. Um, the discussion um, questions are due almost every week um, during the semester. And so you can go week by week here, but um, I want to um, get to an example of a case study. So we're not going to, to do many case studies until we get a, a little bit later. We're going to do some, some work on chapters from the New Ethics of Journalism and to look at some, uh, some websites. But here for, for an example, there's a, an article which goes to the issue of fake news. And this is from the Columbia Journalism Review. And so this, this is the kind of article that I'll be putting up. There's also a, a case study which comes from uh, the Columbia University, which deals with uh, how we use material from Facebook. Um, so that those are the, the types of case studies that, that uh, will happen. Um, when it comes to an analysis, they're marked here. You'll also find them on a calendar. But the first one happens in week three, January 28th to February 1st. So the week starts on, on Monday and, and ends on, on Friday. Um, so <clears throat> I want a 500 word analysis that should include at least two academic sources. And the analysis should be, should be formal, which means that uh, I am not interested in your view Okay. I am interested in um, an analysis which puts forward an argument and that is backed up by academic sources. Okay. So I don't want you to say, I think this, I feel that, or we should do thus and so. It should be written as a formal paper in the third person. Um, it should be uploaded to Canvas. I think that you should probably know how to use Canvas by now. Works a whole hell of a lot better than Blackboard. Um, and for analysis number one, uh, it should address the following question. Are objectivity, fairness, and balance outdated ethical structures for journalism? Why or why not? Okay. And here, I do not want you to depend upon the textbook. Okay. I want you to look for, or my lectures, uh, I want you to look for um, academic sources outside um, of the textbook or my lectures. Okay, I want you to look at the library site. There are plenty of articles that, that deal with uh, these issues and you can find them to do these, uh, these analyses. Okay, there are four of them, one due in week three, uh, one due in week five. Um, basically, week five has to do with the use of social media. Um, week nine, uh, I'm sorry, week eight, just after we come back from spring break, has a third analysis. Um, and then there is a, a fourth analysis that is due week uh, 12, April 8th to 12th. Okay. There's no f examinations in this course. Um, I find that some examinations can be useful. For example, when I teach law, um, there are certain facts that you can learn and hold on to. This is more of a theoretical class where you need to analyze a, a group of facts and then and then put them into some coherent form. Um, final paper is due um, at the uh, on Thursday, April 25th. Um, there are you know pretty standard stuff but important stuff uh, on sensitivity. These issues can be pretty tough. I mean, we're talking about issues of hate. We're talking about um, uh, protection of sources. We're talking about things that we may disagree about. And so we need to be aware that there are uh, individual differences. Uh, uh, almost all points of view have value. Um, and so let's be, uh, let's be sensitive. Uh, let's, not, let's, be, let's be honest and straightforward, but not combative, okay?
There are certain academic rights and responsibilities that you've probably heard before. There can be special accommodations. Um, there's also uh, some things that I expect from you as academic honesty and to avoid plagiarism. Um, and so, you know, this is, you know, this is essentially the, the type of overview for the syllabus um, that, uh, that I want you to, to be, uh, to, to know about. And one thing is that each Friday, uh, the week before, let's say week two, the Friday before week two, I'll send out a, a, a note via Canvas saying, here's what I expect for the upcoming week, okay? You may find that I send you too much information. Um, I apologize for that in advance, but I just want to make sure that everybody, that we're all on the same page, particularly in an online course like this. You can always contact me at charper, C-H-A-R-P-E-R, at temple.edu. Uh, I'm also available uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays or by appointment. Um, and I'm located in at 1938 Leocorus, um, which is right next to the dormitory. Um, and I'm in room 104. Why don't you shoot me an email um, if you want to see me, uh, just so I know that, you know, you, uh, so we can make sure that I'm there and that you're coming and, and everything is copacetic. So that's what we have to start out, and uh, I hope you enjoy the class. I enjoy teaching this class. I enjoy teaching online, and so we'll see you online. Thanks very much.